Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a doo. Hey, I'm Michael. I'm a classically trained composer, but I also really love popular music and video games. My friends and I on this channel have been reviewing media starting in 1985 and slowly moving forward. We just finished all of our 1992 content, and I thought it might be interesting to look at some numbers. So we're going to go through our top rated albums of 1992 and our top rated games of 1992. But then I'm also going to look at albums and games of the 90s so far, and then albums and games of 85 to 90 everything that we've covered so far. After this, I'm going to talk about some general trends that we've observed, and then finally I'm going to give you a quick channel update of what to expect going forward on this channel. If you're not interested in all of that content, go ahead and click through the chapters beneath. I understand if you don't want to watch everything, pick and choose what you like. I'm going to start by going through the albums for all of them. So our top five albums of 1992, starting with number five, R.E.M.'s Automatic for the People. Molly and I gave this an 80% or a B minus, and this has the hits Man on the Moon and Everybody Hurts and some other gems that I really love, like The Sidewinder Sleeps Tonight. This is a pretty unobjectionable album. It's pretty easy to just put on and listen to, and it's not going to upset people, I don't think. But it's also not the most exciting thing in the world. It's not going to light anyone on fire. At number four, we've got Gin Blossom new miserable experience. Molly and I scored this at an 81%, which also gives it a B-. This has their biggest hits on it. It has Hey Jealousy and Found Out About You. Those are both great songs, but the rest of the album's at least pretty good. Check it out. At number three, with an 82% or a B-, we've got 10,000 Maniacs album Our Time in Eden. I just covered this myself. I am fairly new to this specific album, but I came into it having loved their MTV Unplugged album forever. Half of this album is on that MTV Unplugged album, so it's fun to have these different versions of it. I think MTV Unplugged versions of these songs are usually a little bit better, but these are still very good. At number two, with an 86% or a B, we've got PJ Harvey's album Dry. I scored this just by myself. This is just such a tight album from three really talented musicians working excellently together. Everything just locks into place and there's some really fun experimentation going on in this. At number one with a 94% or an A, we've got Tori Amos' album Little Earthquakes. Ramin and I reviewed this together. It's not my favorite Tori album, but it's still really good and it's starting the trajectory to get to her best album in my opinion. So look forward to that in the coming years. So now if I'm going to bring in our our scores of albums from 1990 and 1991. This reshuffles things a little bit. At number five, we've got 10,000 Maniacs, which I already discussed, but tied with that is Kronos Quartet's album Black Angels, which also has an 82% or a B, and it's from 1990. This is a classical string quartet album, and it starts off with this piece called Black Angels that's a bit difficult to listen to, but I recommend that if you start with a Shostakovich string quartet at the end, listen to that first, then listen to all the stuff in the middle, which is mostly just fine, and then end with Black Angels. I think you'll sort of appreciate this all really well. This is a very, very good string quartet album. At number four, with an 83% or a B, we've got Pearl Jam's album 10 from 1991. Molly and I scored this one together, and yeah, you just kind of can't argue with all these hits. At number three, we've got PJ Harvey's album Dry, which we've just discussed, but it was a favorite album of someone involved in our number two, which is Nirvana's album Nevermind, which got a 93% or an A from me and Molly. This has the vast majority of the Nirvana hits that you know. Some people think it's a little overrated because it's just so cliche to say that this is your favorite Nirvana album, but it's not wrong to say that this is your favorite Nirvana album. It's really good. And at number one, we've got Tori Amos's album Little Earthquakes, which we've already discussed. Now, looking at all of our scores from 1985 to 1992, in fifth place, We've got Nine Inch Nails album Pretty Hate Machine with an 88% or a B plus. One of my favorite albums of all time. I really, really love this album. It's just so interesting and intricate and it's basically impeccably crafted. Tied with that, with an, again, 88% or a B plus, is Dolly Parton, Emmy Lou Harris, and Linda Ronstadt's album Trio. Molly and I reviewed this together and it's just a really fun listen if you like this sort of music. I can understand it's not for everybody, but I love it. At number four, with an 89% or a B plus from 1986, we've got Paul Simon's album 
Graceland. Molly and I reviewed this together. It's one of her favorite albums of all time. It's not quite up there for me, but it's it's a very good album that has some excellent collaborations with a lot of musicians from around the world. There is no number three, but tied for second place, we've got Nevermind by Nirvana, which we've already discussed. But tied with that, our other number two is Kate Bush's album, Hounds of Love, which has a 93% or an A. This album's from 85. Ramin and I scored this together, and this is another of my all-time favorite albums. I really love this one. This has Running Up That Hill, which you probably knew from Stranger Things a couple years ago, but this whole album is very good, and I especially like the back half of the album, which doesn't have the songs that are quite as radio-friendly, but they work together into a suite that tells a story, and it's really moving. And at number one, we've already talked about Tori Amos' Little Earthquakes. Now let's go back to just 1992 and look at video games. We didn't have quite as many games that we covered in 1992, so we're gonna go through all of these even though I don't really love all of them. Starting at number four with a 68% or a D+, so I didn't really love it, is Shining Force. Shining Force is a strategy RPG. I did not grow up with this game, so I don't really have any nostalgia for it. I first played it when it became available on the Switch online for the Genesis. I don't think it's bad, I just don't think it's for me. It doesn't quite have enough story and some of the mechanics are a little frustrating to me. Moving up to number three, a game Ramin and I reviewed together, which we gave a 75% or a C, Final Fantasy V. I think it's always a little interesting when Ramin and I review games together because the scores often end up a little bit lower than I think they should be. I think this is actually a better game than I was expecting it to be. I had played it before when I was a kid, but I replayed it with Ramin a while back to make this review and it surprised me. I think it's a good game. This is the Final Fantasy game that really sort of perfected the job system that several of the games have. If you're an RPG lover but you are more interested in the gameplay than you are in the story, then this might be the perfect game for you because the gameplay in this is really so fun. It's really just the less interesting story that holds it back a little bit for me. At number two, with an 88% or a B plus, is a game that Erica and I reviewed together. That game is Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. This is a pretty typical Mario game, but it's obviously simplified significantly for the Game Boy. But this does have the appearance of Wario for the first time in the game, so that's fun. Our number one game of the games we reviewed from 1992, which got a 94% or an A, Super Mario Kart which Erica and I reviewed together. This is not really the absolute first kart racer game, but it's among the first. There's one that you could say is a kart racer that came out a few years before this. From this Super Nintendo game, we have get all sorts of kart racers across the board. Every fandom basically has a kart racer now, and it all starts here. If we include game scores from 1990 and 1991, tied for fourth place, we get Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins. The other number four is Final Fantasy IV, which also has an 88% or a B+. I reviewed this one by myself. It's the first Final Fantasy game that really has an interesting, compelling story to it, and that really sets it above all of the ones that came before it, and also Final Fantasy V. At number three, we've got Super Mario Kart, already discussed. At number two, with a 95% or an A, we have Super Mario World, which Erica and I reviewed together. This is probably from my childhood my favorite Super Mario game. It's the quintessential side-scrolling platformer, but I don't know, this one's just so colorful and fun, and it's at just the right level of difficulty for me, at least. And I'm not very good at games, so maybe it's not the right level for you. And at number one, with a 96% or an A, is a game I reviewed all by myself, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This is probably my favorite Zelda game. Uh, I know a lot of people have a lot more nostalgia for Ocarina of Time. Maybe my opinion of Ocarina of Time will change. Like, that's probably my number two, either way. But maybe my opinion of Ocarina of Time will change once I review it. Sitting right now, having already reviewed A Link to the Past, I think A Link to the Past is a little bit better. If we include all games from 1985 to 1992, then we get Erica's scores really bumping a lot of things up. Starting at number five, we've got Super Mario World, already discussed. 
At number four, we've got The Legend of Zelda, which is a 95% or an A. I reviewed this just by myself, and it got a lot of bonus points just for being the first in a franchise that I really love. At number three, we've got A Link to the Past, already discussed. At number two, we've got Super Mario Bros. 2, which Erica and I gave a 98% or an A+. And at number one, with a 100% or an A+, we've got Super Mario Bros. 3. I do kind of think that had I reviewed this game, you know, today, I might have taken a couple points off. Erica would have still given 100%, I'm sure. It's her favorite game. But for me, it's not my favorite, so I'd probably bump it down. I'd probably end up still getting a 99, though, let's be honest. Okay, moving ahead to some trends we observed from 1992. We do talk about TV and movies a little bit too, so I'll quickly rush through those, but there's not as much that is as interesting to me in those. In TV, we have the premieres of the Batman animated series and X-Men, which I think for a lot of people around my age, this really ignited a new wave of superhero love. It certainly did for me with X-Men. Also in 1992, we saw the premiere of The Real World, which I think really ignited our country's love of reality TV. When we get to movies, we can talk about some really defining hits that still reverberate today in some way or other. We've got Disney's Aladdin. We've got Batman Returns. We've got A Few Good Men, just for the sake of people quoting You Can't Handle the Truth, still. We've got The Muppet Christmas Carol, which is a lot of people's favorite Christmas movie. And we've got Sister Act, which is, you know, just so much fun. And I think a lot of people around my age have a lot of nostalgia for that film. We can move on to video games then. I think one of the most interesting things from 1992 is that the Sega CD was released in North America, which allowed for a lot of different content and games, better sound quality, voice acting, which is somewhat possible on cartridges, but so much easier on a disc, and full motion video, which we start to see a lot more of coming sometime soon. Also important from 1992, Mortal Kombat in the arcades. This will take over a lot of arcades and then soon homes, and then Congress will say, hey, we should put ratings on games. I already talked about how we are introduced to the character of Wario in Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, but we are also introduced to the character of Tails in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, so that's a lot of fun. If we look at the best-selling games of 1992, Dragon Quest V and Final Fantasy V are both on that list, which is really interesting because they weren't released in the US yet. They were only released in Japan, for starters, and even with just the Japan numbers, those sales were so high that they charted for the worldwide best-selling count. And if we look at console sales, Nintendo definitely won the console wars when it comes to sales in 1992. The Game Boy outsold the Game Gear and was the best-selling console that year. The Super Nintendo outsold the Genesis, and the Nintendo NES outsold the Master System. So. All three of those generations, or versions of play, Nintendo outsold Genesis in 92. I'm curious to see if that changed at all in any coming years. Moving on to some general trends in music, one of the biggest songs of the year was undoubtedly Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. We hear this cover on the radio constantly still today. It is one of the best, if not the best, examples of popular singing in the world, according to Molly, and I agree with her. Also in 92, Eric Clapton bored us all, or at least me and Molly, with his Unplugged album, which has the lame, in my opinion, version of Layla, the Unplugged version, and it has the overplayed, overly sappy Tears in Heaven, which won so many awards that year. Billy Ray Cyrus's song, Achy Breaky Heart, reignited some passion for line dancing, which had been missing in the popular culture for a bit. And I think one of the most interesting things, if we look at just the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 from 1992, it features mostly people of color, which is really interesting and exciting. Looking back at our music overview videos from the past couple of years, we said that 1990 is sort of the year of mom music. 1991 is the year of grunge. We didn't say anything like that this year, but I would say that 1992 is just sort of a really interesting grab bag. It has a lot of different types of music that all reached their own versions of prominence, and it, I think it's a really interesting and good outcome from that.
And now for a quick channel update. We have a pretty ambitious schedule planned for 1993 videos. We've got 22 videos planned. I don't know if all of those are going to be made, but that's what we're thinking about right now. 18 of those are music related, so this might be a music heavy year. We've got lots of covers planned in those 18 videos, so that is a fun change of pace always when we have those on the channel, I think. But it's not all going to be music. Partially, I am not factoring in the 1993 games as heavily because I've made a lot of game reviews already. I like to have the games be a little ahead of schedule since I typically like to completely beat a game before I review it. But games from 1993 that already have reviews on the channel, we've got Ogre Battle, The March of the Black Queen, Breath of Fire, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Lufia and the Fortress of Doom, Secret of Mana, Illusion of Gaia, and Phantasy Star 4. So there's already a lot of gaming content from 1993 that's already on the channel. Looking ahead at what's coming up in games, the next game review will be Ark the Lad 2. I've already streamed the first two hours of that game, so you can check that stream out if you're interested. Coming after that will be Wild Arms. I don't love Wild Arms. I know I'm way in the minority in this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to beat this game and review it. I will at least live stream it though. Coming after that, we've got Final Fantasy VII. There's already a review on the channel from a while back about Final Fantasy VII, but I think we kind of need to revisit this a little bit. I will stream the first two hours of it, and I have a few extra videos already planned, but I don't know, I might even see if we could re-tinker with our scoring a little bit to see if we feel like it. I don't know if we're gonna do that or not yet, just a thought. But the next game that will definitely get its own full review is Final Fantasy Tactics, which I'm very much looking forward to. I haven't played that game in a long time. So we might have a couple mix-ups in who is participating in videos for 1993 content or any other content coming up. And that mix-up might include some new people participating in some of the videos. I just want to tease that idea. There might be some new people participating in videos, but I don't want to mention who they are yet. But as part of that, there might even be one or two videos without me in it. No promises, we'll see. Anyway, that's about it for today. If you want to check out any of our specific points that we've made about any of the content I mentioned this, in this video, check out the description below. I'm going to link all of the 92 content, but I won't go into all of the older content that we've already had on the channel. You can find it if you want to look it up. If you are only interested in our music content or only in our video game content, etc., I highly recommend you check out our playlists. I've got a playlist for music talk. I've got a playlist for covers. I've got a playlist for just my music theory classes, etc. You can find what you're looking for. I think one of the more interesting ones that I have now is a very long playlist of all of the content that we have on the channel by release date of the content. So if you want to look at my review with Erica of Super Mario 1 and then watch the video of our discussion of all content in 85 and then go on to 86 content, that's an interesting thing you can do with it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any different thoughts on any of the content below. If there's anything that we missed that you really think should be on some of these rankings somewhere, let me know. Please give this video a like if you liked it. Please give it a pity like if you didn't like it. It won't hurt you, I promise. Two, this side is a video that YouTube thinks you might like, so check that out. Up there in the corner is the link to our channel. You'll find all that stuff there that I've been talking about. And that should be about it. Maintain your groovy selves.